everyone, I'm Heather and welcome back to my channel. So we are back today with Doki Doki Literature Club. In the last one, we started a new game after Sayori had died and she is now missing. So it's repeating the same thing that we had already done, but without Sayori, which is interesting. So when we last left off, there was a fight between Yuri and Natsuki. And it seems like Yuri said something, but we don't know what it is. Uh, we now have to do a new poem. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's do ribbon music. Ooh, uh, let's see what that is. Oh, wow, okay, um, games. We'll do, ooh, everything's getting a bit weird. Let's do excitement. Um, bouncy, heaven scent is interesting. Okay, sunny, bunny. We are still trying to get Natsuki. Childhood, uh, extraordinary, lollipop. Let's do whirlwind. Oh, weird. Okay, question, maybe, pink. I guess not everything would be her. Fireworks, let's do fireflies, raindrops, dream, and then our last one. How about Valentine? That got a little odd. I don't know what would have happened if we didn't pick that one. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Welcome back, Bob. Uh, hi, Yuri. I'm not sure if it's me or if it's Yuri's expression, but the weight of yesterday's quarrel still hangs in the air a little. Um, Yuri glances over her shoulder, looking around the room. Natsuki's reading manga at a desk, and surprisingly, Monica isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yuri takes my arm and pulls me to the corner of the room. About yesterday, I, I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before. And something just came over me, I guess. I wasn't acting mentally sound. Please don't think we're usually like this. Not just me, but Natsuki as well. Yuri, I'm happy that you were considerate and apologized. You don't have to worry too much. Even though I've only been here a couple days, I could tell something was off yesterday. Maybe we were just a little extra sensitive because it was our first time sharing poems. But whatever it was, it didn't make me think any less of you. I had already decided that there was no way you can be a bad person. And now that you're apologizing, I know you really didn't mean it. Uh, Bob... Don't say those kinds of things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. I'm really glad that you're such an understanding person. And I'm really glad that you joined this club. Everything is a little bit brighter with you around and... Uh... Sorry, what am I saying right now? I just... Hey, have you guys seen Monica? Uh, no, I haven't. I was also kind of wondering where she was. Man. Yuri, I'm guessing you haven't either? Yuri is clearly taken aback by how calmly Natsuki is addressing her. No, I haven't. Geez, this isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help but worry a little bit. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Um... Natsuki, about yesterday... I... I just wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean any of the things I said. And I'll do my best to stay under control from now on. 
So, Yuri, what the heck are you talking about? Did you do something yesterday? Eh? Jeez. Whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. I don't even remember anything bad happening. You're the kind of person who worries too much about the little things, aren't you? But... I'll accept your apology anyway if it helps you feel better about it. Besides, it's kind of nice to hear, since I was always afraid you secretly hated me or something like that. <laughs> no, not at all. I don't hate you. <laughs> well, you're kind of weird, but I don't hate you either. Natsuki turns to me. You're still on trial, though. Hey! Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Nah. Well, Natsuki was. I, I was not! <laughs> what took you so long anyway? Uh... Well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I just kind of lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, uh, don't give me more credit than I deserve. I guess I've been practicing for a while, but I'm still not really good yet. Still, that must require a lot of dedication. So, I'm still impressed. Ah, oh, well, thanks, Yuri. You should play something for us sometime. <laughs> That's... Monica looks at me. Well, I am working on writing a song, but it's not quite done yet. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. That sounds cool. I look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Bob. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah... Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I was hoping that I could share it with you anyway. I guess that's why I've been practicing so much recently. I see. I'm not sure if Monica was referring to the whole club or just me. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. I choose not to bring up anything that the three of us talked about. Besides, Natsuki has already run off into the closet. Bob, um, since your compliments put me in a good mood, I was wondering if you'd like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club. Ah, uh, I suppose so. I don't think I could say no to you after you gave me that book. Well, I guess I need to make sure Natsuki isn't waiting for me. After we finished reading yesterday, she... She's fine. She's reading over there, see? Don't think about her so much. She's used to being ignored. Come on, we're going over there. Well, that's interesting, because I'm pretty sure the stuff that I picked was Natsuki's, but it was hard to tell. What's the story about, anyway? Well, mm, I look at the cover of the book. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous-looking eye symbol on the front cover. Basically, it's about this religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison. And the people trapped there have this trait that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood. But the facility gets even worse, and they start selectively breeding people by cutting off their limbs and affixing them to... Oh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. But anyway, I'm really into it. The book, I mean. Not the thing about the limbs. That's kind of... That's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came from nowhere. Uh, are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Bob? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. 
Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just this kind of story. It's the kind that challenges you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen not just because someone wants to be evil, but because the world is full of horrible people and we're all worthless anyway, then suddenly... I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know I have this problem. When I let things like books and writings fill my thought, my whole body... Oh, I couldn't read that. I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. Ah, uh, that's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? Yes. I mean, you don't have to, but... Uh, what are you saying? Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Ah, uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is... Reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. All right. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri meant about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sorry. I was just bathing in the... <laughs> okay, I can't read those that fast. Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's, then hold my book more between the two of us. Ah, uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly, Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Ah, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah, I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn the page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face, and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Eh? To turn the page. Ah, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, uh, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do. Since you've been so patient with me. Yeah. Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she's finished the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. 
my thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but... The main character reminds me of you a little bit. Eh? No, I don't relate to this character at all. Definitely not. Really? I was just thinking the way she second-guesses things she says and all that. Ah, that's what you were talking about. Sorry, I thought you meant something else about her. Something else? Never mind. We didn't even get that far yet. So I don't know why that came into my head. <laughs> Yuri, are you feeling all right? Eh. <sighs> Yuri's been a little fidgety ever since we started reading. You can rest if you're feeling sick or something. Your breathing is a little... My breathing? Yuri puts her hand on her chest, as if to feel her heartbeat. I, I didn't even notice. Anyway, I'm fine. I just need some water. All right, don't push yourself. Yuri stands up and practically rushes out of the classroom. What on earth was that about? Bob? Did something happen just now? Eh? I have no idea. Yuri was acting a little strange, I guess. So you don't know anything? Sorry, I can't say I do. Are you worried about her? Oh, no, not really. I was just making sure that you didn't do anything to her. No, nothing. <laughs> Don't worry, I believe you, silly. Yuri just does this sometimes, so it's nothing alarming. All right, if you say so. Anyway, why don't we start sharing our poems with each other? Eh? Shouldn't we wait for Yuri? Well, she might be a while, so I figured we'd get started without her. Is that okay? Yeah, I was just asking. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. Okay, so I can only do two options today. Natsuki? Hmm. Hmm. Well, it's not terrible, but it's pretty disappointing after your last one. Then again, if this one was as good as your last one, I would be completely pissed. Well, I guess I wanted to try something a little different this time. Fair enough, you're still new to this, so I wouldn't expect you to find your style right away. I mean, everyone in the club writes really differently from each other. Maybe you'll find a little influence from all of us. For instance, I noticed that you were spending some time with Yuri today. Not that I care who you spend your time with. After all, I was taught never to expect anything from anybody. So it's not like I was waiting for you or anything. Still, you should at least look over my poem. You'll probably be able to learn something from it. Oh. No, no I won't. <laughs> not today. Okay. Bob, why didn't you come read with me today? I was waiting for you. I was waiting for a long time. It was the only thing I had to look forward to today. Why did you ruin it? Do you like Yuri more? I think you're better off not associating with her. Are you listening to me? Yuri is a sick freak. That should be obvious by now. So just play with me instead. Okay? You don't hate me, Bob, do you? Do you hate me? Do you want to make me go home crying? The club is the only place I feel safe. Don't ruin that for me. Don't ruin it. Please. Just stop talking to Yuri. Play with me instead. It's all I have. Play with me. Play with me! Oh! Wow. Okay, Monica. Hi, 
Hi again, Bob. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right. Great job, Bob. I was going, oh, in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way, it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism? Sometimes I feel like Yuri's mind is just totally detached from reality. I don't mean it like it's a bad thing, though. But sometimes I get the impression that she's just totally given up on people. She spends so much time in her own head that it probably is a much more interesting place for her. But that's why she gets so happy when you treat her with a lot of kindness. I don't think she's used to being indulged like that. She must be really starved for social interaction, so don't blame her for coming on a little strongly. Like earlier. I think if she gets too stimulated, she ends up withdrawing and looking for alone time. Suddenly, the door opens. Yuri! I'm back. Did I miss anything? Not really. Well, we all started sharing our poems with each other. Eh? Already? Uh, I'm sorry for being late. No need to apologize. We still have plenty of time, so I'm more glad that you took all the time you needed. All right. Thanks, Monica. I suppose I should get my poem now. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Save me. The colors, they won't. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. And this is similar to one she wrote before, but not quite. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating. Waveforms. Squeaking? Screeching, piercing, sighing, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a knife on a breathing ribcage. That part's new. Endless, probably poem, of meaningless. Delete her. Sorry, I know it's kind of abstract. I'm just trying to, um, well, never mind. There's no point in explaining. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when, um, who am I talking to? Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me anything. Please help me. Okay. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, so we can share a poem with Yuri now. I've been waiting for this. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri smiles and takes a deep breath. I like just holding it. Uh, I mean, the poem turned out good. It's, uh, well, there are some things you could work on, but that doesn't really matter. It feels like anything written by you is a treasure. <laughs> that came out a little awkward. Let's move on. Here's the poem I wrote. You don't have to like it or anything. Wheel. Oh, I hate her writing. Okay, that's going to take a bit. Okay, 
a rotating wheel turning an axle, grinding, bolt head, linear gearbox, falling sky, seven holy stakes, a docked ship, a portal to another world, a thin rope tied to a thick rope, a torn harness, parabolic gearbox, expanding universe, time controlled by slipping cogwheels, existence of God, swimming with open water in all directions, drowning, a prayer written in blood, a prayer written in time-devouring snakes with human eyes, a thread connecting all living human eyes, a kaleidoscope of holy stakes, exponential gearbox, a sky of exploding stars, God disproving the existence of God, a wheel rotating in six dimensions, forty gears in a ticking clock, a clock that ticks one second for every rotation of the planet, a clock that ticks forty times every time it ticks every second, a bolt head of holy stakes tied to the existence of a docked ship to another world, a kaleidoscope of blood written in clocks, a time-devouring prayer connecting a sky of forty gears, and open human eyes in all directions. Breathing gearbox, breathing bolt head, breathing ship, breathing portal, breathing snakes, breathing God, breathing blood, breathing holy stakes, breathing human eyes, breathing time, breathing prayer, breathing sky, breathing wheel. <sighs> it doesn't really matter what it's about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately so I had to take it out on your pen. Ah, uh, that is, a pen fell out of your backpack yesterday, so I took it home for safekeeping, and, uh, I, uh, I just really like the way that it writes. So I wrote this poem with it, and now you're touching it. <laughs> I'm okay. What did I just... Can we pretend this conversation never happened? You can keep the poem, though. Okay, let's off. Okay, our special poem. A dream. I was staying over at my friend's place. There were four of us. I drifted off to sleep while everyone was talking and watching TV. In my dream, I was still at my friend's house. The only difference was that there were nails sticking out of the walls everywhere, and there was also someone I didn't recognize. The person I didn't recognize told a joke, and everyone laughed. I woke up to the sound of everyone laughing at something that happened on TV. So the laughing was not part of the dream. It was the noise that woke me up. I wonder who that person was, and how they knew to tell a joke at that moment. Okay, everyone, we're all done reading each other's poem, right? We have something we need to go over today, so if everyone could come sit in the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting new members. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? Look, I know everyone's been a little more lively ever since Bob joined and we've started with some club activities, but this isn't the time for us to become complacent. We still only have four members and the festival is our only real chance to find more, you know? What's so great about getting new members anyway? We already have enough to be considered an official club. More members will just mean everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage. Natsuki, I don't think you're looking at it the right way at all. Don't you want to share your passion with as many people as you can? To inspire them to find the same feeling that brought you here in the first place? The Literature Club could be a place where people can express themselves like they can't do anywhere else. 
it should be a place so intimate that you never want to leave. I know you feel that way too. I know we all do. So that's why we should work hard and put something together for the festival, even if it's something small. Right, Bob? Uh, oh, come on. You can't take advantage of Bob to agree with you just because he doesn't know how to say no to anything. Look, Monica, do you really think any of us join the club with other people in mind? Yuri never even talked until Bob joined. As for me, I just like it better here than I do at home. And Bob isn't even passionate about literature in the first place. And that's everyone. Sorry, but you're really the only one who's so interested in finding new members. The rest of us are fine like this. I know you're president and all, but you should really consider our opinions for once. Monica's clearly taken aback by Natsuki's words. That's not true at all. I'm sure Yuri and Bob want to get more members too. Right? I don't know about Yuri, but I'm kind of indifferent. If I showed as much enthusiasm as Monica wanted, then I would probably be lying. Still, if it's up to me to rescue this situation... Um... No. Natsuki's right, isn't she? This club... It's nothing more than a place for a few people to hang out. Why did I think that everyone here saw it the same way I did? But that doesn't mean we're against getting new members or anything. Bob, why did you even join this club? What were you hoping to get out of it? Well, that's not really something I can be honest about, is it? In fact, if I remember, you weren't even given a choice not to join. Monica sits down and stares at her desk. What's the point of all this anyway? What if starting this club was a mistake? Now you've done it, Natsuki. What, me? I just spoke my mind. Is that a crime, to be honest? It's not about being honest. It's about word choice. Besides, you have no right to speak for everyone else in the club like that. You don't understand at all. I just... I just want a place that feels nice to hang out with a few friends. Is there a problem with a club being that for me? There aren't... There aren't many other places like that for me. And now Monica wants to take it away from me. She's not taking anything away. No, Bob. It's not the same. It won't be the same with the direction she wants to take it. If I wanted that, then I could have just joined any other stupid club. But this one... I mean... At least for a little bit of time, things were nice. Natsuki starts packing up her things. I'm going home. I feel like I don't belong here right now. Natsuki. Natsuki ignores Yuri and walks out of the classroom. This is bad. I don't know what to do. Well, do you have an opinion on the festival? I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent, I guess. Who cares about that obnoxious brat? I mean... I like how nice and quiet the club is right now, and I'm just happy with you here. But still, I'm the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities like that. Nobody would cry if she killed herself. I should do my best to consider everyone's perspective and make the decisions that are right for the club. But what about you, Bob? What do you want to get out of this club? Yuri repeats the same question as Monica. I decide giving an indirect answer is better than nothing. I think the most important thing is for everyone to get along. And for the club to provide something that you can't get anywhere else. I don't think it's about how many members, but rather the quality of each member. That's what will end up making the literature club a special place. I see. I really agree with you. Each member contributes their own qualities in a special way. With each change in members, the identity of the club as a whole will change too. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, stepping out of your comfort zone once in a while. 
so if you would like to help Monica with the festival, then I'm on your side as well. All right. Well, maybe we can all talk to Natsuki tomorrow. Yuri nods. Hey, Yuri. Eh? Um, I know things were a little awkward yesterday. But I feel like you deserve to know that I still think you're a wonderful vice president. And also a wonderful friend. Monica. I want to do everything I can to make this the best club ever. Okay? Me too. Yeah. Let's all go home for today. We'll talk about the festival tomorrow. Okay. I look forward to it. Shall we go, Bob? Um... Please don't take this the wrong way, but... I'm going to chat a little bit with Bob before we leave. Just to see what he thinks of his time here and all that. It's important to me, as president. Yuri looks a little troubled, but she doesn't protest. Okay. I trust your judgment, Monica. In that case, I'll see you two tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Monica waves as Yuri exits the classroom. Phew. Things have been a little hectic lately, haven't they? Bob, I just wanted to make sure you're enjoying your time at this club. I would really hate to see you unhappy. I feel kind of like I'm responsible for that as president. And I really do care about you, you know? I don't like seeing the other girls give you a hard time. With how mean Natsuki is and everything. And Yuri being a little bit, you know. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like you and I are the only real people here. You know what I mean? But it's weird, because in all the time you've been here, we've hardly gotten to spend any time together. Uh, I mean, I guess it's technically only been a couple days. Sorry, I didn't mean to say something weird. There are just some things I've been hoping to talk about with you. Things I know only you could understand. So that's why, wait, no, not yet, stop it. All right, so... We've got another one of these, so we might as well go with it. I'm just going to pick the top one in each thing. I don't know if it's going to do 20 different times, but we'll pick the top one and see where we end up. Hi, Bob. I've been waiting for you. Are you ready to continue reading? I brought my best tea today. Monica, I told you not to. Ugh. Is she really late again? Inconsiderate as usual, Natsuki. Excuse me? Must you always interrupt my conversations with your incessant yelling? What are you talking about? You say that like I do it on a regular basis or something. I just wasn't paying attention, okay? I'm sorry. Seriously, what's gotten into you lately? Look, I did some thinking about yesterday. I was a little more hostile than I meant to be. I guess I really felt threatened or something. But I know this is something we're doing together. Another new member wouldn't hurt, as long as they're cool. And I guess another girl would be nice this time. So, Natsuki, nobody cares. Why don't you go look for some coins under the vending machines or something? Oh man, I'm the last one here again. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and still trying to make time for piano? Well, maybe not determination. But I guess passion. It motivates me to work hard for the festival, too. Anyway, Bob, what do you want to do today? I was thinking we could... 
We already have plans today. Uh, is that so, Yuri? That's correct. Bob is already engaged in a novel that we're reading together. Aren't you glad I've already gotten him into literature, Monica? I... I suppose... I was just... Actually, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. You guys can do whatever you want. Yes. Um, thank you for your understanding, Monica. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk, and then I'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Ah, I might as well walk with you. That's okay. You stay here. It won't take long. Pitcher in hand, Yuri hurries out of the classroom. Ah, did Yuri leave you again? No, it's not like that this time. She's just filling up the water pitcher to make tea. Oh, okay. Sorry for misunderstanding. Ten minutes pass. Yuri said it wouldn't take long. Is something holding her up? I'm bored just waiting here, so I decide to go look for her. Let's see. The most logical place for Yuri to be would be the nearest water fountain. I start heading down the hallway. Ah! Uh, ha! 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 What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. It sounds like breathing. A sharp inhale, like someone is sucking the air through their teeth. Are they in pain? I reach the corner and peer around it. Yuri? Yeah. I'm back. Thanks for waiting patiently. Bob, do you like oolong tea? Ah, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not a tea expert or anything? <laughs> In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking. And I decided I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around, anyway. Ah, uh, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Bob. That's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Bob, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Eh? Why's that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. 
It's most likely because of my... Uh, my... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading? Yes. I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies. I take it, since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but... When she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, that's... That's okay, I won't take any. Eh? Are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate and hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me as if she needs to confirm what just happened. Um, Bob, sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh, Yuri starts to breathe heavily. I, I can't. Bob. Suddenly Yuri forcefully grabs my arm and jerks me to my feet. My teacup gets knocked over. Bob. My heart. My heart won't stop pounding, Bob. I can't calm down. I can't focus on anything anymore. Can you feel it, Bob? Yuri suddenly presses my hand against her chest. Why is this happening to me? I feel like I'm losing my mind. I can't make it stop. It even makes me not want to read. I just want to look at you. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, it's time to share poems. Okay, well, I guess that's where we're going to go ahead and end today, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!